you, raise your right hand. You swear or affirm the testimony about the evidence to help you back. Yes. Where right, you can be seated. <coughs> and then would you state the name and spell your first and last name? Sure. Uh, his name is Luke Kirtley. L U K E K I R T L E Y. Do I want to say some? Is it K-I-R-T-L-E-Y? K-I-R-T-L-E-Y. Okay, I want to place on the record that Mr. Kirtley doesn't mean any disrespect. He has a sensitivity to his eyes, so he's been given permission to have his to um, to wear his uh, hat. Yeah, that's fine. So the jury doesn't think he's being disrespectful. Okay. Um, may I call you Luke? Yes. Okay. Good morning. How are you? Good. How are you? Um, Luke, can you tell the jury what your um, occupation is. What do you do for a living? Sure. Um, I own a company called Coffee Hub um, in Detroit, and so we uh, you know, manufacture and roast coffee and supply coffee to restaurants, hotels, um, and own a couple of cafes as well. All right. And when did you start that business? Um, so I, I registered the business in about 2017, um, moved into Bellevue, um, I would say about two years after that. In our current spot, we were there since 2020. Okay. Um, just briefly, what do you what do you need space for in your business? What are you what are you doing in your actual um, brick and mortar? Sure. So uh, as of current, we have two spaces in the building. Um, one space is on the first floor, which is where we manufacture uh, the coffee. So we import it, uh, we bring it in on trucks. We do all the roasting there, um, and you know packaging everything like that. And our offices are down there as well. And then on the third floor. Um, we just have storage. All right. Um, and the address of that building is what? 1111 Bellevue Street. All right. How, how long have you been a tenant there? Um, so I've been in the current space since 2020. Um, maybe a year before that, I was in another space on the third floor. All right. Uh, are there any conditions in your lease about what you can do um, with that building in terms of what you can use it for? Definitely. Yeah, I think there's uh, general terms and conditions that you define within the lease. Um, you know, to to my knowledge, um, what I've seen. Can there can you have um, a business that has people um, residing there overnight? No. Uh, at least in my specific lease, um, you're not allowed to sleep there at all. All right. Um, can you describe to the jury, aside from the address, about where that building is in Detroit? Sure. Uh, so it's. Generally, when I when people ask me where my office is, I tell them it's right across from Belle Isle. Um, so, you know, Island in Detroit. We're about two blocks off of Jefferson, which is a pretty fairly main road. Uh, Jefferson and East Grand Boulevard. Specifically, this is Bellevue between Lafayette and St. Paul. Okay. Um, and about how many other tenants, if you know approximately, are in that building? I would say in terms of leaseholders, maybe 10. Okay. Um, is there anything else significant about that building with regard to storage? Is there parking? Uh, yeah, so uh, in general, um, where maybe, you know, employees and tenants of the building park are on the street, uh, which is just free open parking, and then there's two parking lots. There's uh, the, I don't know, north or west, north or south or east or west, but um, on one side of the building, there's a parking lot, which is uh, gated, you know, you have like a little clicker to get in, and then on the other side, there's a strip of guest parking that they identify, and then the same thing, kind of like a remote uh, sliding gate. And so who has the, the, the fob or the remote to get into the parking lot? Uh, tenants. Okay. Um, is there any in indoor parking or garage? Uh, so there are indoor garages. Um, there's a couple different spots. Mm -hmm. There's one side of the building on the, if we're looking at the front of the building on the left, there's an uh, essentially like an, an empty part of the building that hasn't been developed yet. Um, that they store like a truck when they spread salt and whatnot. That sits in there. Um, and then there's a main garage door, uh, which ten tenants use actively to go in and out of um, for loading and unloading. Okay. Um, and then on the on the first floor, there's an elevator that you can drive a car onto and go up and down through the floors. Okay. And what would you? What would be the reason you have to? You need a car elevator. Uh, well, so the building was. Um, for like car manufacturing in the 20s. Okay. Um, so or it was there, it's the original elevator from when the building was built. Um, but tenants like myself and um, a, a woodworking company on the second floor will use it to move cars up and down, load, unload generally. All right. 
So in addition to your coffee roasting business, you you, you have a, another hobby, is that correct? <laughs> That's correct. All right, and what is that? Um, Jerry, so, what it is? Yeah, so I, uh, I it, it like to drive cars. Um, so I, you know, I cycle through, sell, buy um, cars just to enjoy. And so um, presumably where you're getting at is on the third floor. Um, you know, I put cars up there every now and then. We have one of the storage units as a garage door ourselves so we can pull a car in there. For so storage. at any given time, how many cars <coughs> do you have personally? Two or three. Okay. Uh -huh. um, I want to take you back to uh, November 30th of 2021. Um, how many cars did you own at that time, if you can remember? I believe two. Uh, it might have been three, but as far as I know, it wasn't that many. All right. And did you have a reason, um, that was a Tuesday, were, did you work that day during the day? Yes. And about what time did you leave? Uh, not sure exactly. I, you know, being a business owner, I work really random hours, um, so sometimes late, sometimes early, but generally speaking, I get off around six-ish. Okay. Uh, talk to me about activity. Have you been there at, at night past 10 o'clock before? Yeah. Um, what is the, what is, what's the... The, the building occupied around that time? Do you have people that are still in the building working? Very rarely. Um, so there's like, there's one tenant to my left, um, which is like they breed rare plants, uh, to my knowledge. Um, they are intermittently there late. Um, it's not a pattern, I would say, if anything. So they're just kind of there. Um, and then there's a vinyl sign uh, company as well. The owner's often there late, but not, I wouldn't say he makes like a, a particular habit of being there at a certain time, but generally speaking, when I go there uh, to like switch cars around or anything, it's uh, empty. Okay, um, let's back up the switching car things. Explain to yeah, the jury okay. what you mean. So I, um, at the time, I lived down the street, uh, more or less, you know, less than a mile away, and where I would park my car, um, I found it as a liability to park uh, one of the cars there because it was like a nicer, lower mile car, because my other one had its mirror taken off. Um, on the street that I parked on. So <coughs> when I have a, like what people refer to as like a daily driver, that's what I let sit at the building while I, you know, went and enjoyed my other car. Mm -hmm. And then when I, mean, it was I can't time personally relate to that, but I <laughs> <laughs> uh, When it was time to put it away, um, I went and got my, my worst car generally, you know, and uh, went to go park that on the street. And so I, I took the car. You have a beater? <laughs> yes, a <I'm> beater. <laughs> exactly <laughs> right. You should have seen the oil that came out of that thing. Anyway, <laughs> um, so yeah, I had a, a beater, you could say. Um, and then the other one was a little nicer, um, and I had plans to sell it, so I put it at the office to avoid, um, you know, something like that happening. Okay, so you decided to go take that car and, and basically switch cars. That's correct. And, and you did that at what time, if you remember? Uh, around 10 p.m., I would say. Okay. Um, <coughs> did you live with anybody at the time? Uh, my girlfriend. Okay. So, now fiancé, uh, she's nice, but um, she, and she's always like, oh, it's so late, just leave it, it's fine. And But I'm just always, like, obsessed. So I'm like, oh, yeah, no, I'm just going to switch it really quick. Because you didn't want anything to happen to it. Correct. Okay. So, um, <coughs> when you went to the building around 10 o'clock that night, mm -hmm. What, if anything, did you know about Jennifer Crumley? So, obviously, I was uh, relatively in tune with what had happened to the school. So, I knew of that news, um, and I had heard through Facebook, I saw, I don't know what or who posted it, but it was some type of, like, um, poster, you know, that was like, hey, this is, like, the car, this is, like, the situation, everything like that. What, what, is, what, what was on the poster? The car and the license plate, and presumably any photos or anything like that. Okay, so I, I need you to kind of be specific when yes. you say the car and photos. Uh, Were there any people <coughs> pictured in the photos? Um, I believe so. And do you know who that was? Um, I, well, it was the, the two parents. <coughs> okay, the Crumbleys. Mm -hmm. All right. And then there's a picture. There were pictures of cars. Yeah, there was a picture of. Uh, it was like a stock photo of a Kia, um, and it was a newer Kia that I've never <laughs> seen before. So I kind of, you know, kind of remember that. And then there was a license plate as well. Okay. Um, what did the poster say? A lot. Were there any words? Uh, yeah. I mean, I assume it. I, you know, two years ago at the time, but I assume it would have said wanted, and then additional information. Um, about the whereabouts, anything like that. But okay. just really, to my knowledge, you know, like all I really remember of it is the car the and the license plate. Okay. All right.
right, so tell the jury what happened as you approached the building. What's the first thing you did? Do you have to use the clicker? Yeah, so um, I used the clicker, and I don't know how far you want me to go, uh, but I used the clicker, uh, pulled my car into the parking lot where I, you know, I normally park my car, and then at the time, I noticed a car was parked in the back corner of the lot, you know, like tucked away, but I didn't really pay any mind to it. We have cars, you know, many tenants in the building with different cars, and employees leave cars every now and then. Uh, but I feel like I'm pretty in tune with uh, who keeps their cars there and just generally observant. And so I saw the car, didn't really think much of it, um, went inside to my office, and then when I walked back out of the door, that's kind of when I was in line of sight of the front of the car, and that's when... Okay, so the car the, wasn't, yeah. the car was in, um, was backed in or was it parked front first? Uh, no, so it was backed into the, uh, you know, the furthest corner of the lot. Okay. Uh, Were there any other cars in the lot? I don't, there may have been one car in there that wasn't my own, um, but I wasn't sure, I'm not sure if that's it, but I do know there's one car that generally sits there. Was it the closest spot <coughs> to the building or the, or the furthest away? It was the, so if you're standing in the front of the building, it was the furthest spot you could park possible. Okay. And um, I'm sorry, I, I said November 30th, um, and I, I, I apologize. It wasn't November 30th. I was asking, did you know what happened on November 30th? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh -huh. What was the day, though, that you went to the... Um, at 10 o'clock to switch the cars? Uh, I'm not sure off the top of my head. Whatever day. The was, it a, was it a Friday? I, I'm not. Okay, but if, if I told you it was December 3rd, do you have reason to believe that was incorrect? Not particularly. Okay. I, think it, I mean, I remember it being very cold out. Okay, so. okay. Thank you, Mr. Keith, for reminding me of that. Um, so you came back out and you saw, did you say you saw the car again? Yeah, so when I opened the door, the side door of the building and walked out, I was met more in the line of sight with the front of the car since it was back into the spot. And um, what did you think, if anything? Um, really, I just thought it looked a little familiar and it, it you know, rung a bell and it was the car that I saw on the poster. How soon in time to the, the, the wanted poster, as you describe it, um, did you see that car? Uh, it was the same day. Okay. All right, so what did you do next? Um, so I saw the car, uh, but obviously it was backed in, so I didn't see the plate, which I thought was peculiar, uh, just because it was a newer car and I hadn't seen it before. Um, so I pulled up on my phone the poster I found it. Hold on. Oh. And, and, uh, um, I think you're hearing people next door. Oh, okay, uh, I'm sorry. Okay, okay so um, you pulled up the poster on your phone. So I found the poster, um, and I was doing this as I was walking to the car, uh, and by the time I had the poster up, I was I turned my flashlight on and walked around the back of the car uh, on the driver's side to the back, and then obviously put two and two together that that was the plate that was on the poster. So the license plate did the license plate match what was on the poster? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then what happened? Um, and then so I so I looked over um, mm -hmm. and saw somebody sitting next to the car on a curb. So there's like a general curb. Um, saw somebody sitting there. Um, on, the, on the driver's side? On the passenger side, rear passenger side, there's like an elevated curb that you could sit on, probably two feet tall. Okay. And um, somebody was sitting there, um, put up in like a blue plaid hoodie. And I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't like, oh. Uh, Did you say anything? I didn't say anything. Um, as you approach the car and it's facing you, correct, the front of it? Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> Did you see any figure um, on the passenger side no. wheel? Okay. No, it um, was also dark. Okay. Um, was there a line of sight? For instance, if when you turned around and you, from the back of the, the, the passenger, <coughs> could you see in front of you, or was there something obstructing that? Uh, no, it was pretty clear, straight shot. As to whether or not uh, we would have been able to make eye contact in theory, I'm not 100% positive, uh, okay. just based off of like the angle of where the door and the car is, um, but would I you, would it be um, if if you were standing where that person was sitting, would you have been able to see somebody approaching the car? If I was standing, then yes. If I was sitting, I'm not a hundred percent positive. Okay, so did that figure in the hoodie move? Uh, no. Did that individual turn around and respond to your flashlight? No. Did 
Did that individual say anything? No. Did you notice anything else? Do you know what the individual was doing? <clears throat> no. Okay. Um, what did you do next? Uh, turned my flashlight off and very calmly walked back into the building as if I didn't see anybody. Why did you do that? Because um, I assumed after connecting that it was uh, the plate that it was somebody uh, related to the incident. Okay. And how were you feeling in that moment? Uh, quite tense. I, I remember specifically putting the plate two and two together. It's like, that's a, that's a feeling we've never felt before. Okay. Um, but so then I walked back into my office. Um, okay. And I locked all the doors. And then... Were you afraid? Uh, I would say so, yeah. I, I wasn't aware of... I mean, it was a, a lot of emotions were going on at the time. Okay. Um... <coughs> is the building equipped with um, a CCTV? Uh, as far as I know, they have cameras, um, and they've used them before. Um, in other, you know, there was a there was a theft in that building once. Okay, so you are you aware where the cameras are placed? Generally, okay. Uh, there's one in the parking lot that we're talking about right now, and then there's a few in the what I would consider like the main promenade of the building inside. Okay. Have you had an opportunity to view that footage in the night? Uh, that night? No, I have not. Okay. Uh, your Honor, it is People's um, 344. Your Honor, we, the defense stipulates to the admission of 344. Thank you. All right. Uh, so you, you can see on your monitor yeah. there. Um, we're going to. What are we looking at? Okay, so this is um, a camera from the, the rear of the building. I actually didn't know that we had a camera here. Um, okay. There's another camera, which in this, there's um, that trash, like, kind of receptacle back there in the top right corner. Okay. Uh, there's another camera there. All right, so um, what's up on the right corner, top of the page? What is that? That's, uh, like, a dumpster. Okay. Uh, so, like, a removable dumpster. And where, in relation to this photo, would the entrance or exit be? Right to the left of it. So if you are looking generally like, yeah, that is the gate that you pull into. Okay. So this is looking at the building. Uh, this is this is a, this is on the building. Okay. The camera itself looking away from the building. So that's where what you just what we just pointed to is where you would enter the parking lot. Correct. Where the clicker. Yes. Okay. Uh huh. And um, then the, the actual door is uh you know to the right here, yeah, right right over there. Okay. Okay, but for the record, Your Honor, the, the time stamp is 22 minutes off. It seems to be a running theme with all surveillance. Um, so um, that would be what time would. One moment, Your Honor. Isn't this. Um, 10.56? It's not 10.56. Up on the screen is 22 minutes faster than actual time. Okay. Um, we're going to establish the time of the 911 call, which might help put this in, in better perspective. At some point, you called 911, correct? Yes. Was it how long of a time period was it um, from seeing the individual and recognizing it was the same car to calling 911? Maybe a minute or two. Okay. Uh -huh. So your call to 911 was around 1043 that night. Okay. Um, so, um, you, you just, a, a few minutes before that, is that correct? Definitely, yeah, okay. I went right into my office and called them immediately. Okay. <coughs> okay, so I believe that's around 1034 that this footage is from, um, but we can play that, and um, we're going to play that. Is that your 
car at the top. Uh, I believe so. That would make sense. I, All right, well, we'll wait till Yeah, later. we'll wait until I pull it in, and I'll definitely be able to know. parking spot, um, is that, <clears throat> how close to the entrance of the building is it? Uh, it's, I'm parked right next to the door. Okay. And the place where you saw this Kia and we saw an individual walking towards the left, um, where, where would that car, like we can't see it, but where would it be parked in relation to this um, screen? So where is their car? Yes. Uh, in the bottom left right there. Okay. So at the top, do you see what you, can you tell the jury what you're doing? Uh, going into the building, looks like. Okay. Uh, you can see me look over at the car, too, right there for the first time. Also, just for the record, I don't know if this is my BMW or the Volkswagen, but I know I had those two at the time. <coughs> and they both have roof racks, unfortunately. enter the building, then do you have to go into another um, door to get to your unit? Yeah, I have to go through just my main office door. Okay, so can you tell the jury what you're doing right there? So that this is where I'm uh, walking over to check that plate. Um, and what do you have in your hand? My phone. <laughs> I've never seen this too. Out in the yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, how long was it there? Um, 
a few days maybe, maybe a week. Um, could have been there longer. I know it was there long enough for somebody to put a note on it and to ask <coughs> if it was like being thrown out um, and if they could buy it or use it or something. But somebody put a note on it okay. at some point. All right. Um, and the when you walked back into the building that night, um, at some point did you notice that that mattress was no longer in in that promenade area? Uh, I probably didn't pay any particular mind to it, but uh, I it was <coughs> there. The next day, yeah, did you see? Did you notice that, or that night, or? Well, I I assume I could have noticed at the time, but I don't recall if I particularly uh, remember if the mattress was there. Obviously, my mind was on a little on something else at this point. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. I'm going to play for you. At some point, you call 911. Is yes. That? Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to play for you the 911 call. You have listened to that before. Yes. Okay. It's Exhibit 345. Any? Of, I'm not sure if there's an objection to it. I'm sorry. We stipulate to the admission of 345. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We're going to play. Call on Friday, December 3rd. 
on your unit that look out to the parking lot on the yeah, right. Yeah, uh, many. All right. Are there windows in the art studio that look out to the parking yes. lot? Yes. Okay. Um, how soon after <coughs> you made that call did you hear uh, sounds of, of law enforcement? Uh, well, I saw the lights uh, through the window, and that's when I came out. Um, Five-ish minutes. All right. Um, how many cars approached? It was. It wasn't many. It was like one or two. All right. And what did you do? I uh, met them out there, and basically gave them the lowdown. Um, said this: the car in the corner is um, is the one, and then I let them into the building, and they went because you can only access. I didn't have my um, cloud, obviously, that was sitting in, or the garage opener that was sitting in the car. So, opened the door for them, then they went out the side door, verified the plate, and then a lot uh, a lot more people showed up. Okay, talk to me. Tell the jury about that. Um, so, maybe five minutes after uh, they personally identified that that was the car that they were looking for. I mean, it must have been 20 or 30 officers at that time. Lights and sirens. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh huh. Um, don't know if the sirens were on particularly, but lights were on for sure. I mean, people came like locked and loaded. You know, there were a lot of guns. All right, locked and loaded. Mm -hmm. What does that mean to you? Can you describe that to me? Um, every, uh, you know, the officers who were inside of the, uh, the building had, you know, full on rifles uh, walking through the space. Vests? Yep. Okay. Definitely. Do you remember what it said on their vest? Um, no, but I know U.S. Marshals were there. Okay. At, a, at some time. And how do you know that? Because uh, they told me. All right. The people you spoke to, though, what law enforcement agency, at the, the, the first two or three cars that arrived? I assume they were just <laughs> Okay. At some point, did you go back into your unit? Um, yes, definitely. Yeah. When, that night, when was it? Um, sometime between now and there was a time where an officer took me to like a central command center area that they set up a couple blocks away. Um, but they told me to hang out in the office sometimes. Uh, they, uh, you know, I sat there for a little bit. I stepped outside for a little bit. Generally kind of like floating between outside and um, Okay, the when you were in your unit, could you hear any sounds? Uh, yeah, generally I can hear quite a bit. I, it's just the windows, you know, the half of the walls are just windows. Okay. And then um, all the, the walls, it's just two pieces of drywall, no insulation. So generally, um, you can hear that people are in the building. All right, and that that um, evening, were you? Did you see any searches conducted? Uh, yes. All right, and could you? Were there was there one officer, or more than one? How many were in the building, if you know? Uh, ten. Okay, and <clears throat> were they silent or were they talking? No, they were talking. Okay. Uh -huh. So they were making a lot of noise. Yeah. Okay, and. You, at that time, did you have any idea where uh, this individual was by the car? Uh, no, I, so they asked me. Um, I didn't think they were at all involved in entering the building or not. I would have thought that they, because uh, they just asked me what I think, and I was like, they definitely would have taken off. Okay. Um, so they had, you know, essentially a perimeter. I was standing with an officer, and he was like, oh yeah, you know, like we're scouting out the the surroundings and whatnot. So, I at the time, if you would have asked me if they were in the building, I would have told you hundred percent, no way. But you didn't see them go anywhere. Nope. You just thought they would be running. Yeah, I just I didn't think there was a situation where they would have been able to access the building without the fob. I see. Um, at some point, the Crumbies were apprehended. Were you there? Uh, I was at the command center thing that I uh, described earlier at the time. Okay, so did you observe searches just in the house, or were you aware that there was searching going on in the in the area? Uh, no, I was just I mean I was just aware that there were searches going on in the, the office building. Okay, and did you return to your office that night? Uh, well, I had to get my car. I don't know if I entered my office afterwards. Okay. Do you? Oh wait, I did walk into the office because I was walking with. Uh, all right, do you know if that was before or after they were apprehended? That was after. I was not there um, during the apprehension. Uh, the One of the officers, when we were sitting at the command center, was like, here they go, and then uh, took me to the office. And can did you recognize anything about either one of the individuals? 
Uh, I never saw the individuals. Okay. Uh -huh. I okay. only saw a, a car. I saw a car leave. Okay, I appreciate mm -hmm. that. Um, do you remember what time you that was or when you arrived home that night? Late. Uh, maybe 2 or 3 a.m. In the morning? It, it was a couple hours, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, at some point, did that mattress reappear? Yes. Uh, so afterwards, I don't know if it was the same day or like, you know, the following day, but the mattress was back into the hallway and there was a bit of a tangle as to what happened with it after. Um, somebody had placed it like in front of the artist's door at a time and then it got moved back to the center and kind of went back and forth because I, I don't know whose it was, um, but I assume they didn't want it after uh, what had happened. So I don't know where it is now, uh, but it was, it was generally floating around the office uh, building for a couple days afterwards. Thank you, Luke. Cross. Yep. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Shannon. I'm going to ask you some questions. If I confuse you in any way or ask a bad question, can you please let me know? Sure. Okay, thank you. Um, I just want to go back. You're a tenant in the building. Your business is in that building. Is that correct? That's correct. And there are other businesses in that building. Yes. It is not in any way, shape, or form an abandoned building. That's correct. Now, you were testifying about how you have cars um, that you store in the building. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Yes. And I'm sorry, the judge is making, the court has to make a clear record of yes sure. or no, so they can't record mm-hmms. Okay. But I knew it was right. Okay. So, you have <coughs> cars that you don't want people to see um, that occasionally you have over at your place of business, correct? That's correct. So at night, if you have a nice car, you actually put it into the building mm -hmm. so that people out in the parking lot can't just see it out and about. Yes, though I would say I'm very particular about my cars. I would say that generally uh, people don't think like that. Okay, but if you're, if you're thinking like that and you wanna make sure people don't see your cars, mm -hmm. you know if you put them in the building, they're safer. That's correct. It's in my um, my unit specifically. So I have a garage unit um, that I pull the car into because the technically it's still in public view uh, by the other tenants if I were to just park the car. And we aren't allowed to park our car in this space generally. Uh, I only use it for my specific unit. Okay, I see. And on that date, it's fair to say no one asks you, hey, can somebody put their car in your private space in the building, correct? Correct. Now, you testified that when you saw the person out in the parking lot, they were sitting outside of their car. Is that correct? Yes. And when you even walked over with your flashlight, mm -hmm. that person didn't get up and run away, anything like that, correct? Correct. Could you tell what that person was doing? No, just if sitting. I, if I told you they were smoking cigarettes, do you recall seeing that? No. So they stayed sitting even when they saw you with the flashlight out there? That's correct. And after they saw you with the flashlight, we saw in the video, you went back in playing it cool, correct? Yes. And that person appears to have walked back into the building as well? Yes. You weren't aware that they walked back in the building, but we can see now on the tape that that's what happened. Correct. And you testified that when you could see the person out by the car, um, they could see, they could also see you, correct? Not particularly. Um, there, if they were sitting behind the car, um, like I mentioned, there's a chance they couldn't have met direct eye contact with me coming out of the building. So they may have seen you or may not have. Correct. Now, you testified too that <coughs> when this was all unfolding, you put yourself in the most secure spot in your space, in your tenant space, correct? Yes. You went into your office and felt like you needed to hide out in the most safe place you could find.